All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to welcome from across the pond, as you like to say here, from Dom Chapman and Elliot Chapman, who are, well, one is in Manchester and the other, did, where'd you say, Bournemouth? Bournemouth, sunny South Coast. South Coast, so one's in the north of England, one's in the South Coast. Uh, and Elliot and Dom are co-founders of Chapman Capital, and they share what it's like to acquire, sell businesses, grow world-leading agencies, and invest in exciting teams worldwide. And so what we are going to actually talk about today is the concept of hybrid leadership. And and um, whoever wants to kick this off, that, that's a term that's kind of been thrown around a lot at the moment, and I'm not sure that people really understand what is meant by hybrid leadership, because it has a number of different dimensions. Yeah, I think it's one that's really grown since the pandemic. You know, the pandemic, which you'll hear a lot of, has changed how we work, how we interact with staff, colleagues, whoever it may be. Um, and the idea of a hybrid leader, which I think is just a fancy way of remote working and how you can really push that is is my personal definition. I don't know if Dom's got a slightly different one. Um, but we've been forced to adapt and change how we lead as as leaders fortunately for us we were somewhat already on that pathway um because of the the nature of our business i don't know if you've got a slightly different thought dom no no i, I agree with you uh mm. i think obviously <clears throat> we come come from it as well as as sort of brothers and, and leading leading the companies together so there's there's obviously that angle as well um so i guess it depends depends how you look at it yeah and and i think uh, and I, and i think uh, as, as you said I think it has required a, a change of mindset because, I mean, like yourselves, we actually had moved to pretty much a hybrid organization many years ago. We'd made a strategic decision to do that. Uh, and obviously, so the pandemic didn't really impact us in the same way as it did other people because we were already used to working that way. But it takes a change of mindset because if you're a, if you're a leader, it's, especially if you come from a traditional background, right, you know, traditional corporate background, you kind of have this idea that if you can't see people, they're not doing anything. Even if you're staring at the back of someone's head and they're actually not doing anything, you still feel more comfortable because you can see the back of their head. When in reality, it could be the complete opposite. Yeah. You know, because hybrid work and remote work is so accessible now and you've got the systems to be able to see what people are doing and track output in a much more efficient way, I think we probably see the reverse. You know, just because you're sat next to somebody in the office just because they're there between the hours of nine and five doesn't necessarily mean they're being productive or, you know, their output is at their absolute maximum. Whereas I think remote work has actually exposed some of that um, because you've got transparency in systems. You need to actually show and prove what work you're doing. I think it's, it's pivoted slightly. And, and like you say, you've had to change mindsets. Mm -hmm. And the and the other the other part of it too that's uh, that's kind of interesting and, and I agree with you is that you know people would say oh well you you can't build the same level of relationships you know with remote people and um, and virtual and I'm like well when I thought about it I thought back to you know running companies and having loads of people in the office and all of that and I realized that I actually have deeper relationships sometimes with people I've never met who work virtually than I ever did with somebody who was 10 feet away from me because as you said with all the tools like we don't mess about you know we're on slack or teams immediately if there's an issue you know we call up we're, we're, we're collaborating all the time and, and I think it actually in some ways forces you closer if that's uh, that makes sense yeah, I, I think you, you sort of make more of a conscious effort to to build that relationship because you're not sat next to each other. Um, so yeah, we, we've done the same. We've we've worked with people for years that we've never met, and feels like I, you know, I know them so well. Um, but it's that conscious effort of you know asking the sort of deeper questions on a Monday call, um, or you know doing doing that online stuff on on Slack. It's yeah, it, it feels like it needs to be more important with, with a remote team or a hybrid way of working. Yeah. I think you've, and, I think you've hit sorry, the nail on the head there, Dom. Sorry, I was just going to say, because you're not ever meeting these people or seeing these people, it's that conscious effort that you have to go above and beyond. Whereas if you're sitting next to Sally in the office every single day, 
you'll know roughly what she gets up to and what she does in her life but you won't make that conscious effort to get a deep understanding of who she is what makes her tick whereas we've sort of been forced to with this this new model yeah and and i think the other thing that's uh, really facing leaders now is uh, even if you don't want to go there the reality is and i think certainly in the states this started around the time of the the financial uh, crisis in in 2008 uh, and all the layoffs and all that came from that is people started going hang on a second I have to locate myself in some high cost area, um, high mortgage or a long commute to be next to this, uh, to be near a building with a company who the minute there's a downturn, guess who gets turfed out on their ear? It's uh, it's us. And, and now you're in a high cost area. So people have started voting with their feet and gone. So I'm going to establish my life where I want to live and get a good setup. And then I'm going to go look for a job. So if you want to get the best talent, you kind of have to start looking at the fact that the people are changing their circumstances deliberately and if you're not open to that then you're not going to get the best talent what a hot topic eh dom <laughs> <laughs> yeah. dom spent the last yeah. two weeks in recruitment heavily in recruitment for both the companies right yeah and i think the the key thing for for us is really as long as they can work on the time zones that we want them to work, yep. we really don't mind where they are in the world. Um, and I think that's that's a that's a big shift, and it just opens the talent pool up massively. Um, you know, we're we're talking to people in you know um, Eastern Europe, in you know in the UK, but also in Philippines and Africa. You know, the the applications are from all over the world, um, and you wouldn't get that opportunity to speak to all of those people with those you know with those backgrounds um if they were having to commute you know to, to manchester every day yeah you know, yeah from africa to manchester yeah, <laughs> yeah. long commute a long, long, long commute but it's funny how how much that uh, because there's been a kind of like a pendulum swing again here like some people are demanding like back in the office and all of that which is fine if that's what you if that's what you want to do but I think there's also there is an onus on behalf of the employee too, or the potential employee is that is I think we have to be more open about your circumstances and your setup and all of that, and 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 it should be also it behooves you to make the person who may be hiring you comfortable that you you are going to be the right fit, that you have the right setup, that you're going to be reliable and all those good things. So it's a two way street, right? And I think a lot of what you're talking about there is empathy you know mm -hmm. all we all we want from our teams is to show up deliver the output and anything else beyond that is an absolute bonus and i think mm -hmm. most leaders owners of businesses would would probably agree and if somebody needs to take 30 minutes out to go and pick their kid up from school is that the end of the world if they're working around you know certain deadlines and certain timelines i think gone are the days where you know, you have to be sat in an office on a big floor for hours on end, feeling largely unhappy. Mm -hmm. And I think a hybrid model, remote model, maybe even getting into the office a couple of times mm -hmm. a month, because I do still believe there is something in that face to face interaction. There is definitely value in that. However, it's all about, you know, just giving a little bit of leeway, mm -hmm. 30 minutes here and there or nip into the gym. It's all about how do we make our employees or our team's lives easier and better whilst also delivering a positive output yeah yeah i mean because think yeah. about it right i mean if you say okay uh dom's gonna pop off to the gym for an hour the likelihood is that dom's gonna come back and do a better afternoon of work than if he hadn't gone to the gym if he'd have just sat like there and i think they're the things that you know the mind body you know all of those things you know we need to be more accommodating for for them because at the end of the day we're all in results driven businesses and whatever will get you good results you should be looking at and and by and large happy people are productive people absolutely i agree and i, I think that there is an issue with where everyone is gone remote during COVID and they feel like they have to sit at home at their desk all day. And, yeah. you know, me and Elle have been remote for, for seven, eight years. So we know you can nip off to the gym or you can go for a walk, but there's, I, I feel like a lot of people who are remote now feel like they just, they just sat at home all day and that they're not utilizing the, that side of remote. 
Um, so it's something that we need to, you know, work on with our employees to make sure they get out and about and, you know, go for a walk before work and do these things to, to make it feel more comfortable at home. So I think being stuck solely in like your spare bedroom or mm -hmm. at the end of your bed is even more unhealthy than being forced into an office. So like it can be a double edged sword. So it's how can we help promote them, have a healthy lifestyle, make sure they're getting away from their laptops and not completely stuck at their laptops yeah. or in meetings all day every day that's counter counterproductive <laughs> so it is a lot of it is about getting a balance yeah and and also i mean we came across something quite interesting um a couple of years ago that we hadn't contemplated and that was like we had a younger employee in the company right who didn't want to work at home because they wanted to have a kind of you know that work social interaction and you know all of that and yep. We didn't have an office where this person was so we said okay go find a we work location or a co-location space and uh, you know go in there if that's what you want yep. and all of those now are set up you know they have socials and mixes so they're great so if you have employees who crave that or as you said who don't have the setup at home you still can do that with shared workspaces without having to like set up offices who wants to do that yeah and it, again if it's not a if companies don't have the budget to, for every single employee to have a yeah. shared office or a, a WeWork, then what? It, there's other options. You know, you could go to a coffee shop for one morning. A lot of it is just getting outside of your day-to-day -day environment, and it is tough. You know, if you if you wake up essentially in your office, which is your bedroom, and then go, I can see how that is a challenge to disconnect from work and life and all the chaos that that goes with that. But there are also other things that you can do. There are cafes, there are coffee shops. All right, it may, may not be ideal, but there are ways around it. Yeah. I, I think you, an important thing you, you went on there was disconnect. And it's something we really uh, push onto our employees. But when it hits five, six o'clock, turn your Slack off, mm. turn your notifications off. Because again, with that being at home all day, um, it's quite easy to just see everything through the evening. Um, yeah. So disconnected not in in more ways than one yeah so I, I think from a leadership point of view is these are the things that leaders need to be thinking about now and and as i said they need to be looking at how do i organize the structure of my of my organization in order to accommodate all these things and like you said is to in, maybe encourage encourage people especially as you said your point if you're if you if you live in a small space or whatever and that you we need as leaders to encourage you to say okay Either maybe, as you said, go out once a week or take breaks or whatever. We understand like it's better for your mental well-being that you do these things. But we have to recognize that there's so many different circumstances today that we have to be a lot more flexible in our thinking than we used to, as long as we're getting the results. And it's, it's on, to further your point, John, it's also leading by example. Yeah. It will be absolutely useless if we're telling our team to do certain things, but then you know we're just stuck at the end of our bed. Um, working on our laptops 14, 15 hours a day by us showing and demonstrating, right, this is what we do. We get out in the morning, we chop and change environments. It then promotes the team to go, okay, well, if these guys are doing it, then we can do it. But it's also making sure that the companies are set up so that they are able to do that. Yeah. You know, don't go to a coffee shop if you've got an afternoon of calls. That's probably not the best thing you could do. However, if you need to change environment, you know, you need to get into some deep work could potentially work if you're that kind of that, that way inclined you need the systems to be able to support it as well yeah no absolutely you need the systems and you need uh, and it has to be like i said it has to be a conscious decision because otherwise these things are just going to happen to organically organizations and they're not going to know how to handle it and i think another challenge sometimes for for people in traditional leadership is is to create an environment where people feel like they all belong right not just the in the office you know just a virtual people maybe you've contact because a lot of i think organizations now a lot of them do this is, you know you have full-time employees you have contract work sometimes those contract workers have been working with you longer than some of your employees but you have a lot of different types of employees and making them all feel part of a team is i think one of the biggest challenges for leaders today yeah we we really focus on on that um you know, we have a Monday kickoff call in one of the businesses where the team is completely remote all over the world. So people are checking in from Mexico, Philippines, you know, Bali, all over. 
um, and some of them are contractors and some of them are full time. Um, and I think for, for us, we we prefer to you know treat everyone the same. Um, you know, if they're full time yeah. working, then they should be on that call. Just because they're a contractor doesn't mean that they shouldn't be on that call. It's a thirty minute call of investment for us, but it's it's totally worthwhile. Um, and on that call, you know, allowing everyone the the space to be able to laugh, joke, and you know, it's not just all about work. It's uh, you you every week we ask you know a specific question. Um, what, what was what was last week? So something like, you know, what was your favorite film and why? And, you know, everyone goes round and, you know, says and when you ask the why, you, you sort of get to understand people on a deeper mm. level. I know it's silly, um, but it, it does work. And a, a lot of the a lot of the questions are silly, to be honest. And yeah. I think that's also part of trying to get the right culture of a remote team. Not in my opinion, not every single call should be a deep work call. Mm-hmm. You have to get a balance of and somewhat replicate what would happen in an office, which were, right. which is you'd have little breakout areas. You'd have mm-hmm. a chat whilst you're making a coffee or you're going out for lunch. As human beings, not even as employees or leaders, you need that social element. So we have, you know, monthly quiz night where everybody checks in. Mm-hmm. They might have you know a drink of some sort on them and we play, take it in turns to host a different quiz. And they, some of them are, some of them are actually getting quite elaborate. Some of them are getting a little bit hands on. Um, <laughs> but it's again, that's you would never do that. You yeah. hardly ever do that if you were in an office together, whereas you consciously yeah. make that effort to go above and beyond because you're a remote team. Yeah, yeah. No, I think those are great points because you're, you're correct. If you think back uh, to when we were all in offices, like, yeah, we had occasions every so often, but we didn't really put that much effort into no. into team building and all that because it was just, you just felt it was organic because you're all together. Um, yeah. But it, it was great. And uh, with that, you know, you get so many different perspectives and you know, from different parts of the world and stuff. I, I think it's a much richer experience myself. It's an unbelievable experience. <laughs> um you know, Dom was listing off the countries there. I, f- I feel like we've slightly drawn the shorts. Short yeah, no, I was going to say, what, is, is Unbelievable. Ali still going? <laughs> <laughs> Company retreat is certainly on the cards, Dom. Yeah. Yeah. Signing in from sun- from rainy Manchester and rainy Bournemouth. Yeah. That's not quite what, what we signed up for. But you're mm. right, you do get much, you know, you get a much richer um, sort of feedback from the team. They're all sharing experiences. Whilst we may be going out and watching football or with our families on a weekend, people in Southeast Asia are doing something completely different mm-hmm. that we've never even heard of. Mm-hmm. And it's it's brilliant for all of us. Yeah, yeah. And I think it just leads to greater greater cre- um, creativity. Uh, but like I said, I mean, it needs, obviously, it needs the, the leadership to be open to, open to that and to be open to adapting and building and doing things that maybe they once upon a time would never considered like, oh, why would I do a quiz night with my employees? And yeah. Well, because they're all over the world now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It also needs to be driven by, by the leadership. And that's, that's the thing. If you drop off for a couple of weeks, then it sort of all fizzles out very quickly. So uh, it needs to be driven by, by the leadership team. Yeah, no, I agree with that because I think um, people always take their cues from leaders. So, I mean, if I say to you, oh, this quiz night's really important and then I cancel three of them in a row, then you know how important it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Shows to me, John, that you don't care. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Ex- exactly. And and then I think the the other part that uh, I, I think people are now even, you know, worrying about is, you know, as hybrid leaderships and with artificial intelligence and everything coming in and people sort of thinking, Oh, you know, I can I can now run my business almost with no people and so and I think people are 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 sort of getting a little carried away on that end as well. I think we haven't even figured out the proper hybrid workplace yet without bringing in, you know, things like trying to replace people with AI right now. I I wouldn't get too far ahead of ourselves. You yeah. know, if you look at sales or any sort of service-based industry, people will always buy and interact with people yeah. you know if you look at a restaurant for example you might have substandard quality of food but the service is absolutely phenomenal you'd go back yeah. you'd go back for the experience not because of the food you'd go back for the experience i don't think listen there's a world for ai and we sure. use it in all of our businesses mm-hmm. but i don't think the human element can ever be forgotten and i don't think it will to be honest i think the no. threat will always be there but I don't think 
we can ever lose sight of it. And I think COVID like underlined the, I think it really brought back into focus the human element piece that people really, you know, crave that. And so I think, yeah, use AI by all means to get rid of rote routine tasks or whatever, but allow people to have more time for the relationship piece, because I think that's what people are, people are craving right now. Yeah, that's it. And, and I, I think the with AI, if you do implement it, <clears throat> I think sort of replacing people with with AI is, is a terrible thing. It should be train and upskill them to do a more you know, a more important role. That's that's what the focus should be. It shouldn't be just replace and remove. Um, it should be around upskilling those those team members. Yeah. And I think that's a big challenge for leaders going forward is is how to identify that and and as you said to upgrade what you have people doing so it could be a fantastic thing if people approach it with the right idea yeah absolutely absolutely and, and training remotely is a is a whole nother beast altogether yeah yeah, yeah. i'm not sure we have time for today but... <laughs> that's, a whole other, that's a whole other broadcast <laughs> we're, we're, we're bumping up against the end of our time here listen this is great and all of dom's and where am i here am i dom's and elliot's information will be below this video but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about what you two do yeah, so we run um, two different agencies um, and then an investment firm. So uh, Social Chaps is an outbound lead generation agency. Um, Speak on Podcasts is a podcast guest booking agency, which is how we ended up here. Uh, and Chapman Capital invest and acquire other agencies. Um, and our main sort of one of our biggest joys is speaking to other agency owners, agency founders. Um, and if you do want to speak to us, then reach out to Elliot at chapman.capital or interact with either of us on uh, on LinkedIn. Fantastic. Well, listen, thanks both of you. Thank you for watching and listening. See you all again soon.